Um, we only actually took seven days of writing it, and um, for the most part, it was a lot of individual solo songs in some sense, but it's a record we've always wanted to write. Um, uh, a lot of these songs we actually had in the works for a while. Um, Stay True, the last one on the record, was already recorded before the record came out. It seemed like a perfect ending to it. It's not that we wrote the record around that song, but um, a lot of us individually had a lot of songs that we knew were getting close to becoming together. But it was more of a surprise once it all came together. And once Fridman put all of his touches on it with the producing side of it, it was... Uh, I don't know, we just kind of got finished with it and was like, well, we have this now. And it was a little bit coincidence about, it was 10 years from uh, full collapse to this point and uh, we'd come this far and there was a lot of similarities in both the records. Yeah, I'm a keyboard player, so I, I just add a lot of keyboard songs into it, but we also realized like how well it was actually going to work with the rest of the stuff, you know? We just gave it a lot more room to breathe, and it was it, it's always been a voice in Thursday, but not a present voice, so we kind of pushed him to the forefront this time. But the song No Answers, you know, it's like the whole thing's pretty much a keyboard song, so... We're all best friends, you know? Like, we, it's a labor of love at this point, you know? We don't, we don't, we're not at the forefront anymore, and we're kind of in a good little place as a medium-sized band, which we all enjoy, but more than anything, we all really like the band and being in it together, you know? Those guys are all my best friends, and we like making music together, so. If it was more of a job, we would probably look a lot more tired. I love what they do creatively. I think they're a great band, you know. They're a huge rock band, one of the biggest rock bands in the world, but they're still, Gerard's very, very creative, and they seem to always have a great idea around whatever they're doing in whatever record. And the fact that he's so, he's such an artistic frontman rather than just a singer or a vocalist, you know. Like, he has these images in his head that I think he portrays not only with their band, but also with their videos, yeah, comics, all that stuff. Well, it's funny because the, the artwork for the record was done by this paper artist called Mia Perlman and um, we kind of started tailoring stuff around it because Jeff got really interested into her artwork and he showed it to all of us and we loved it and then she designed a cover for us. So we kind of started developing that image outside of it and it seemed to match really well. Inspiration wise for some of the songs and some of the music, I've, I've been heavily inspired by this band called Big Black Delta from the States lately. And I was listening to it while we were recording the record all the time. And uh, I don't think I was ripping anything off by it, but I was definitely paying attention to what made it great, you know? And realizing, like, you can have these small little pieces of music created on computers and they can be these wonderful things. I lost my wedding ring down the kitchen sink. Well, I think that we're all in the we're all in the phases of that that part of your life where you're either getting married or you're not getting married or you know your companionship changes when you're you know 10 years ago it's like I had girlfriends but now there's wives involved and like the concept of marriage breaking up is something that some of us have gone through unfortunately so you know it's hard for kids to like you know we have kids that are 15 listening to our music we're talking about breakups but it's not necessarily like boyfriend girlfriend it's divorce I mean when we talk about wedding you talk about the hardships of it though it's like when you when you you know if you get divorced from someone or if your marriage goes sour it's like it's not really like a broken heart it's just like your whole life is ruined for a while you know that's an anxiety and a stress that like a broken heart is so I think there's a lot less of the emo element it's more of a truth than anything else I mean, it's. I, I understand that like we were at the forefront of that scene for a while. And we might help start it and the screamo thing, whatever. But I don't think the music really sounds like that. And it's. I mean, it sounds. It might sound silly, but it, all, I. I feel like all music's somewhat emotional. You know, it's like why else are you doing it?
it says it's Spanish for no returns. So um, I think Jeff saw it somewhere and it had really inspired him and he just kept thinking about that word over and over and over again. So, um, but it seemed to fit really well with the record. It, it was kind of like we were shedding some skin, you know? We weren't going to return to what everybody was wanting us to do. Everybody wants us to make full collapse or war all the time again, and we're not going to do that. It's evident by the last three records that we've made. You know what's funny? It reminds me, I don't really like it so much, but it reminds me a lot of what the Pixies used to do. But the Pixies reversed it. You know, they would just scream the verses, or Frank Black would just be yelling the verses and quietly singing the choruses and stuff. So I feel like if they flipped it, it might be kind of cool. As a scene and as a movement, I'm glad that there's, I'm glad that people are trying new things, but I feel like you can do it with one voice, you know? So, unless they're going at the same time. Yeah, well, we used more distortion on the production side of it, you know? So it was like, we was saying the word, but not screaming it. Like, we could okay. say it, you know? So we were just turning up the distortion on those elements, which kind of a new way of doing it, I guess. Uh, people are paying attention to that, that we weren't really screaming as much on the record, but I don't know if it was necessarily on purpose. It, it was what fit with the songs, you know? Like, if, if you hear no answers, it's like, we don't, we don't want to scream that at all. Well, with the old songs that we play live, we'll always be doing those and doing the yelling. It's not like we're going to eliminate that, but the new stuff is definitely, you can hear a difference. So. I think it has a lot to do with our production more than anything though. It's like, but we've always been influenced that. Like the Smiths, the Pixies, those are my favorite bands. The Cure is one of my favorite bands, you know? And it's not like we're trying to replicate that sound or anything, but we paid attention to it because it's something that we love so much. And I, it, didn't re it wasn't really a purposeful thing though, it just kind of happened. Hans, the promoter, kind of asked us to do that, if we'd be interested um, to do. This Full Collapse is 10 years old, so we did Full Collapse, and we're just going to play some new stuff today. So. Yeah, it was really funny. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think we're a big band, and, uh, I, you know, it was their choice to say those things, but so we just wanted to play music with them, you know? We don't think we're a big band, you know? It's like, we don't make money at this, you know? Like, we do this because we love it. We play for bigger audiences, and it's good that we can do that and get out to more people. Playing festivals like this, there's 15,000 people here. Why wouldn't you want to show everyone your music, you know? I had a Big Black Delta album. Um, he's putting out a full length too. Uh, it's just called Big Black Delta, but it's an EP. That's my favorite thing I've heard this year. 